Um, now, next topic, um, crash protection. The most, or the, the, the best known crash protection out there is the very famous um, 200 days uh, moving average, um, as um, um, Matt Faber, for example, uses it. Um, also, Gary Antonacci uses this kind of mechanism, which is whenever <coughs> an asset is going down and hitting the 200 days moving average line, you just take your investment out and go into cash or into alternative um, assets. That works perfectly, works nicely, is well proven. It's just very static in our opinion. Yeah. Um, and again, we are no prophecy. We, we, we don't know what will happen in the future. We just think that these simple mechanism might have been great in the past, but for our own investment, again, I'm talking about my money here and not about yet selling you stuff, is personally, I don't think the world will be so easy in the next couple of years. So what's our approach? Um, I'm not going to read that here, but it's, it's basically, we think still the correlation and the interplay of equity plus fear makes bond. Um, we think or we see that picture here like imagine yourself going behind a truck on the highway. You need a brake mechanism. Whenever the truck brakes, yeah, how do you avoid hitting it? And we think the bond market, concrete the treasury market, offers some of these break mechanism. And to tune or fine tune that anti uh, mechanism, we use duration and coupons. And I'll show you some example. Yeah. So again, it's it's basically simple yeah it's it's a little bit like the famous 200 days if the market starts going south the investor and both the institutional and the private and everybody is just going into fear modus and then they chase into some alternative market bond might be commodity, might be cash. We believe that the bond market is still the best crash protection mechanism which will also work in the future. And here's the first chart. Again, this, this is showing here 2007 to um, beginning 2010. You know this line down here, this is the S&P 500 tanking by 56%. And then up here, I just show you different treasury bonds. And here I have uh, the, the list. One to two th is uh, one to three years, three to seven, 10 to 20, 20 plus. And what we normally use is EDV, Vanguard Extended Duration Treasury, which is zero coupon, a so-called stripped bond. And if you just look visually, yeah, when the market started going down, how these different bonds reacted. Yeah? And this is kind of the balance we are trying to look or we're looking for. Which of these bonds offers the best crash protection, and again, this is kind of tuning or fine-tuning a car. These are a little bit hard to read on the graph. Can you walk us through oh, which of the bonds? Yes. The, um, the highlighted is EDV. Um, and then it goes basically by duration. So this is TLH. No, oh, sorry, TLT. TLH, IAI, and Shyam. These are 
bond funds? Um, all of them, sorry, yes, are ETF. ETF. Um, and again, this, these are here. Yeah, what, what matters here is the duration. And you see um, the, the, of the range of the duration and the, the effective duration and the effective coupon. Do they keep rolling over to maintain the one to yes. three year maturity? Yes, yes. <coughs> and you can see these, I, I just picked the iShares example. They're also um, um, others, but these are the, the iShares are currently the most uh, liquids. Are these available online? Yes, yes, all the presentations online. Um, and uh, I'm not sure if we mail that uh, later to you. Um, but you see that, sorry, it's a little bit hard to read uh, with the so project. Yes, yes, yes. yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, again, th this is only 08, 09 example. Let me show you just another one. Um, if you recall, this was um, uh, 2011, 2012, the so called European sovereign debt um, crisis. <clears throat> also, here you can see this is the SP 500. Yeah. I should have put in also European equity market more dramatic. Um, but again, you see the same reaction. Yeah. Uh, the longer mature, the longer duration the bonds uh, have, the better, let's say, they acted as crash protection um, in these times. Is the top one again EDV? EDV. Do a quick summary of what EDV does. <clears throat> EDV is a 20 plus, uh, longer than 20 years, um, investing in, in uh, US treasuries. <coughs> yeah, and it's so called stripped. So they, they take out the, the coupon, which for the normal investor it doesn't um, matter, but it's basically a full time, um, full, full bond, full treasury market. Alexander, what, where's the tuning in there? I, I guess from these charts, you would just say the highest duration bonds are what you should go into a crash. Exactly. Where's the tuning? That's the tuning. Okay. Oh, you're just saying, okay, just go to the highest. Okay. Exactly. But <clears throat> again, after that, um, there are hundreds of uh, treasury uh, ETFs, so we tested them all basically, and for ourselves, we came out with the best to go is um, EDV. It's also the most, the less, liquid out of the bunch. Which again is one of the parts I put in here. EDV is the most robust. Yeah, the only but here is the liquidity. Um, you can basically substitute TLT, which is the most liquid, um, then you would need a 1.5 uh, leverage. Comment? Yeah. Which might be equivalent. Probably similar. To the yes, world. yes. And years ago, uh, the American Century had a whole family of zero funds. I don't know if they still have them, but uh, same concept. They strip out the base. And yes. Yes, um, I owe you the other ETFs, but there are others uh, out there. EDV, EDV currently, I think, is the most liquid but still not so liquid as um, other bonds uh, might be. Yeah, it's, it's up to a level where we say spread is okay, uh, filling is okay, so for normal human volumes it's okay. Yeah, if you're planning to invest 10, 20 or more million US dollars one day, then either you go in by limit orders and spread the order, or you choose uh, TLT for example, and then uh, leverage up. Sorry. Um, so in a time like now where we've had basically zero interest for a long time, the odds are very good that that's going to go up. What will happen to that EDV investment you make <coughs> when interest rates clearly go up? And maybe we um, dedicate really a 15 minute slot on that topic in the Q&A. I know this is a hot topic right now. I hope I can convince you that it will not happen as soon as you might think. But again, this is then very philosophical also because nobody really knows. Yeah. But let, let's dive into that into the Q and A if you agree. Yeah. Um, Excuse me. I, I'm a bit concerned that we have a lot of slides mm -hmm. left to cover and only less than an hour left. I, I speed up. Yes. I speed up. Um, but again, here a couple of um, examples uh, just to show you. This is not a one-time event, but 
really this was a constant mechanism over a couple of events already. The opposite also might held, uh, hold true. May 2013, Bernanke said we will start detempering, detapering, and all the bonds went south. This also happens, yeah, and then you need the uh, correlation or the, the, the crash mechanism coming from the equities, for example. Correlation, a little bit more technical. You can also see that all of these bonds or treasuries negatively correlate with the S&P 500. Correlation is a proof of concept. It's not the concept itself. Correlation is not causality. So you can still have two assets which are neg negatively correlated, but they can both tank at the wrong moment. But here you can see in all the crisis moments here, they were still negatively correlated, um, at least in, in the events uh, I'm showing here. So now, 